Hey YouTubers, and welcome back to another Dragon Ball Super discussion video. I am once again joined by the one, the only, the other half of the dynamic duo, MJ, over at MJTV. Man, why don't you say hello to everyone listening? Hello everybody that's listening. <laughs> anyway guys, we're going to be talking about something you guys saw the title, saw the thumbnail. Uh, basically just a follow-up video to a video that is seemingly doing very well on my channel. You guys are really interesting to hear uh, more about this stuff. Dragon Ball Super is hitting the reset button when it comes to power scaling, when it comes to te uh, techniques and transformations, and people we're going to be seeing in the future of the Dragon Ball Super franchise, whether it's Dragon Ball Super, movies, any other series, if they do somewhat of a Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z thing, we're not sure. They're, the floor is always open. The, the only thing we do know is that this franchise is so popular right now that it's not ending anytime soon. Uh, but with that being said, we just got introduced to Ultra Instinct. The Tournament of Powers really kind of showcased a whole new level of power when it comes to mortals, with Jiren's character being so much stronger than Goku. But really, with the Ultra Instinct form, with the potential that it is just a technique, a lot of people, there's so much debate about this, man, in the, in the community, about whether it's a technique or a transformation, whether he could put Kaioken or Super Saiyan on top of it. We can address that just a little bit. But what I really want to focus on here is Jiren versus Goku and this idea that they're from two universes that have been dubbed or deemed to have one of the lowest mortal levels. Is it possible that these four universes that are sitting out hold warriors so much stronger than Jiren and Goku that they're not even remotely interested in what's going on. It's something that they've seen before. They're not really, I, I guess, mad about like, you know, like, oh yeah, like we're just, we're really good at doing our jobs and that's why we're not here. And yeah, by the way, everyone in our universes, we have like planets of these people named Jiren, you know, they're that strong because even though there's some people who stand out, like Goku or Vegeta or Frieza or Gohan or Jiren or Topo or Dispo or <laughs> Hit or Kaba, Kefla, you know, any of these other people, right? Uh, they're just outliers in entire universes. They're outliers who might advance the mortal level, but it's too little too late, not enough to actually shift the tides and make this universe better than it actually should be. If things played out the way they should, the gods did what they need to do. Beerus and the gods of destructions uh, needed to do what they did need to do. So, what are your thoughts on that? I know it's a big mouthful, but other universes, do you think that there are people stronger than Goku and Jiren? And what do you think that means for the future of the series? No, yeah, I completely agree with that. I think it's. I hate to sound like a uh, egotistical right now, but I think it's kind of obvious <laughs> because <laughs> we know the story is going to continue. Dragon Ball Super Weeks makes way too much money you know what i mean that's just, just the truth even if i have issues with the show some people hate the show when they get canceled no it's not it makes way too much money a lot of money in merch it's going to continue and usually when a show continues you're going to need newer antagonists you're going to need newer characters that could potentially pose threats or at least rival the characters we already know of like goku and vegeta and when you look at what we've been seeing in the tournament of power I could be wrong. There may be some statements that me and Mark missed, but if I remember correctly, the other universes, specifically the exempt ones, and I, th I believe Catella too to some extent, but mostly the exempt ones, really didn't seem bothered by the Ultra Instinct, you know, and by Jiren and, and so much of that. You know, like I think one Kaioshin made note of that Goku and Jiren didn't get this strong through normal training or something like that, and one of them explained briefly what the ultra instinct state of being is you know the technique and stuff but they didn't really show any interest like we you know you didn't have anyone going oh man that's so cool wow immortal did this you know and you didn't have people freaking out like beers who was like i can't believe it you know like, you didn't really get those reactions out of the exempt universes and i'm not trying to say that you know maybe they have fighters that are unbelievably more powerful than these guys maybe they do who knows but i think the idea that jiren and goku being the sole strongest you know in the multiverse i'm kind of leaning of you know against that because there's some evidence that actually supports that maybe they aren't alone you know maybe they're not at the top of the food chain when you go back in the first episode no i believe it's actually the second episode of the special during the ginky dama beam struggle when you have uh, the struggle going on you actually have uh the ultimate you know god destruction or at least that's what he's dubbed is he's a god destruction of the ultimate universe that being universe 12 you have Jin, i believe 
you yeah the fish guy you have Jin actually kind of look up like he was looking down he looks up with his arm still crossed and he's just like oh things are getting interesting now so that's a very interesting line uh mark because we were talking about this a little while ago and that kind of says to us that this dude's been bored <laughs> this whole tournament <laughs> he's been bored watching jiren and goku like he was bored watching jiren and goku fight you know when jiren was using the the eye techniques and goku was like in his kaioken times 20 on top of the blue form like he was bored at that very reminiscent to how hit was kind of bored throughout the whole universe 6 tournament watching like goku fight in the super saiyan form against people like kaba and Mageta, you know he was he didn't really find any interest until they pulled out the blue form here this guy didn't find any interest until they pulled out the Inky Dama stacked on top of the Kaioken times 20 with Jared, you know, struggling to push it back. That's very interesting because maybe Jen has seen fights that are more interesting than this and, and showcase a lot more power and showcase a lot more, uh, you know, something that just fight. So he finds it more interesting, you know, like from fighters, maybe in his universe. And that's very cool. And I think that could possibly be what we lead into in the next, you know, story, because even if these universes do come back, we're probably going to need newer characters. And even if they don't come back, it just makes the most sense because with characters like hit gone, and Caulifla and and Kel at least for at least one for one arc, you know, assuming they don't come back immediately, then we're gonna need newer, stronger characters introduced, you know. And I think that's an easy way to do it. To me, just go off that real quick. To me, Jen's character definitely needs to be explored. I think he looks too cool. Like Toriyama likes to kind of play off of these characters that look somewhat ridiculous and not really as intimidating as they should freeze is a very good example of that especially his final form you know like you're looking at his final form you're like oh, that guy's not really like that intimidating looking but then the character plays off itself and it, pl it, it 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 plays up this idea that oh man like i was completely wrong it's one thing he really likes to do cell was that way where it got kind of unintimidating kind of unintimidating is the longer it actually went on and then Boo was definitely like that, where it started off really unintimidating. Uh, it would be really good to see these universes play a little bit more of a role in the future of Dragon Ball Super, especially uh, Jin, to me, looks awesome. But you also have that fox tail one, and then you also have the one that's covered in hair. <laughs> that's, I, I, like, I like that one. I, I feel like that one just pure Toriyama fashion should be the next big person in the tournament or after the tournament you know the next big universe that we're going to explore just because it's kind of silly but really I mean what are your thoughts on this like when you were talking about the Yankee Dama it does go to show that if he was getting interested maybe he never felt power like that and it would be interesting just considering you know Kaioken times 20 on top of blue on top of the entire Yankee Dama with Jiren pushing it off and you're sitting there going Oh, wow, you know, like, that power is either equal or more than I've ever felt before. And this universe, I have people who are like this on a much grander scale because it is a stronger universe. I mean, one of the things that you and I were talking about before we started recording was you really have to look no further than the Future Trunks arc of Dragon Ball Super where uh, Gowasu and Zamasu went back into the, uh, went into the future a thousand years for the barbaric race just to see how they would advance and the idea was okay they're not advancing in any way really they're just still barbaric and they're not they're not really living up to their full potential and what that really shows is they're not really good at their jobs the gods of creation don't do their jobs at policing this stuff the gods of destruction don't do their jobs at policing this stuff that race if it's still around a thousand years from now probably doesn't need to be around now so maybe yes hashtag zamasu was right <laughs> but uh but uh, but that the, but that's the thing like these other universes that are exempt are potentially doing this they're not allowing useless energy and useless uh negan to i guess procreate and figure out like you know actually evolve very slowly and they're taking them out kind of unemotionally but it would be really interesting to to kind of show that in an arc really you know with Jin or any of these other gods of destruction is they're doing their jobs we just had an entire arc kind of celebrating them for sitting out saying like they're doing their jobs really well and they're not you know they're not splitting hairs they're doing everything completely fine 
Beerus, and Beerus is always asleep. Champa's always eating and way too un- out of shape to even do any of this stuff. Everyone else is too conniving, yada, yada, yada. And we get to these four universes who we think, and the show is built up to the point where they're the best at the they're the best of the best they're going to do exactly what they need to do and you realize if we just stay with them for a second stay with them for one arc even if it's just one universe these guys are monsters like they they take out this this that you know other it's it's even worse than the beerus thing that we got from dragon ball super taking out an entire like half of a planet because your your dish is too salty or something like that like they just completely wipe out a race if they make like one mistake you know and they're just kind of all over the place i don't want to say the word i'm thinking about but they're they're just kind of all over the place and they rule with an iron fist and that's what the 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 overarching story of one of the next arcs is is yes all these people who are around are strong and yes they might be fiercely loyal to the gods of destruction or gods of creation of that universe but at what extent and then goku and vegeta and everyone can go into that universe and actually help uh i guess liberate them maybe lowering the mortal level but actually making it better place to live that to me would be a pretty good arc and also introducing characters who are stronger and more agile than people that we've met with Jiren also ups the ante with power scaling and everything else that you need to do in the anime. Just kind of going over the idea that the mortal level has something to do with power level, you know? I would actually like that. Before I get into what I was going to say, I got this weird image of like Jin walking around with this Kaioshin. The Kaioshin has like a god pad and he's like, take me to planet 24265 and B chord is 21. And the angel taps the thing and they fly there. <laughs> And then they ask him, it's been 500 years. What's your technology at? Uh, Jin. <laughs> Explosion. <laughs> and they go just go to the next planet. They're like hopping back and forth. But they do it like every, like every 10 years or something like that. Like just like be, like you said, ruling with an iron fist. Complete opposite of what we've seen from like Chompa Beerus and them, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, isn't that ha- it Doesn't it have to be somewhat of a, of a, uh, the thing though like they have to do that basically because like they they have like that's their job they're not lazy about it they're not they're not uh you know sleeping eating being uh interrupted by not doing what they're supposed to do maybe vermouth is really paying too much attention to topo right now he's in his old age or something that's why they've slipped at the same time that's why universe 11 is like one of the stronger universes and can compete with universe 7 because it's not an anomaly and in fact it's just like right off the cusp and then at the same time you have universe 9 where the gods of destruction the uh, the god of destruction doesn't really like destroying things and it's not like his prerogative and then also uh they've kind of set up Quatella to be kind of a sneaky guy who doesn't really see things, you know, like trying to always play the underhand, always get advantage of people. At least that's the way I've always thought about it. Like that's, you know, he's just kind of like a rat, you know, like he's always trying to get around of things. So these ones rule like with an iron fist and they're going to, they're going to uh, be they're gonna, yeah, like no emotion. I mean, this is the job we're going to, we're going to play this off and there's no emotion to it. I mean, I can imagine really easily playing that off as almost unbelievably evil, uh, but but still sympathetic to the point where you might start being like, well, it's kind of like the Zamasu thing where it's like, I, I kind of feel for like what he's saying, but at the same time, like, no, we have to rally against this and Goku and Vegeta can come in and change their minds or something else like that. It's an interesting dynamic because if you take our guys, the people we know, and put them in a universe like that, Universe 12, for example, right, the ultimate universe, you put them in a universe like that, have them go through a couple of planets or whatever the arc actually is, like whatever plot there actually is, it would be cool to see them run into, I, I know people are going to freak out when I say this, but run into like, you know, Planet M2 from GT, you know, kind of just go into that where everybody works together and, you know, there's so many things that are meant for this job and for this job and they all work you know, in coordination to create a perfect planet and overall create a perfect civilization, the ultimate civilization. And you get multiple planets like that, you know, all different species that come together to create that, you know, making technology more advanced, uh, making the people more advanced, doing this and that, you know, 
it would be cool to kind of get like Goku and Vegeta's interactions to that. And because of that, maybe there's enhanced warriors or maybe the training is better. You have advanced beings, you know what I mean? So it would be cool to see, you know, because obviously Goku, hey, you're strong, I want to fight you. <laughs> you know, you kind of get that idea, mix it in there with people who could potentially all be like, I can't even imagine Goku and Vegeta going to a planet where they're all like Goku blue level. <laughs> you know, they're all like, that's insane. Anyways. Anyways, I just think that's an interesting dynamic, you know, especially for what we've been known, you know, so and it makes me think Zamasu could have just literally have been saved if he was just, I guess, handpicked to be one of the <laughs> I was just for the other universes, <laughs> like one or twelve. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be like, man, I was Jin. I got to tell you, I was in universe 10 and oh boy, man, <laughs> they weren't passing over there, brother. <laughs> Yeah, totally. Like, yeah, I know. But like, it, it, like he was doing something that was completely not his job anyway. But anyway, <laughs> like, no, like, I, I, I'm, I'm serious here. Like, it, it's become very clear that the other four universes don't really care about anything that's going on right now. They might be interested in it, but they're not going to face it head on right now. And it, like you said earlier on in the video, it's just one of those things that we have to kind of accept as a fan base that the only reason they let these universes off the hook right now is because they're they're all going to have or at least one of them is going to have a major story arc going into the future of dragon ball super and i would be really surprised if it hasn't in nothing to do with the whole concept of mortal levels and people stronger than goku and jiren or something else like that i mean this is a shonen anime <laughs> like you need to introduce people stronger and if as long as goku is going to keep fighting mortals which to be clear, he has basically fought in mortals this entire time outside of Beerus. I know you can make the argument that Zamasu wasn't technically immortal, but Zamasu wasn't technically like a, an ordained Kaioshin. He was basically like a you know like a lower level as well. Uh, so and and then Black was Black was technically just Zamasu and Goku's body. So Goku's been fighting mortals for basically this entire series. So, unless they're going to make the jump and make it clear, and I think, honestly, if they do do this, it is clear, uh, without a doubt, that if you're not an angel, if you're not a god, then Jiren was the top-tier mortal. That's, that's what I think they're going to... That's what I think they say if they decide to do that. But really, I think what they're going to do is bring in mortals who are stronger, and the whole concept of god uh, or, or uh, you know, your mortal level and also just letting these universes go the fact that they're very uninterested in everything that they're watching shows to me that they're basically not interested and people in their universes could take on goku and jiren no no problem likely likely split and we're going to actually see that later on in the series when goku gets stronger learns how to use ultra instinct or maybe even stack ultra instinct on kaioken and Super Saiyan transformations or anything else like that. Uh, any closing words? I love you. No homo. All right. <laughs> anyway, guys, we're going to leave it at that. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Go down to the comment section below and hit that link to go subscribe to MJ. The guy makes some really awesome content. Not going to want to miss that stuff ever anyway at the same time don't forget to uh hit that bell over by the subscriber button that's going to notify you every single time i upload but with that being said guys i hope everyone has a fantastic day it's been real